Um, but I, where I was going with that is, yeah, the top, even the accumulating of volume and then the last week is like everything has to be at its highest. That also kind of mentally was like, whoa, I don't I don't know about that. Like from a psychological standpoint, it's just a lot. Right. I, how, how have you experienced that? Is that something you have to get used to? Yeah, it's um, I don't think I applied the setup appropriately initially uh, mm. because I got into territory of and I was definitely um, in this category of more, thinking more is better. This is certainly not. And I think actually when you use that approach and you, a lot of people, when they go through the approach that I'm using, they think three to four RAR, that's easy training and it's meant to be easy from week one. And if I'm recovering on time, that means I'm not sore, add more volume. And they get into a scenario where they've trained too easy week one and then they're always fresh. So they add just so much quantity, their quality goes down the, like, the pan. And so you'll see them in the gym and they'll be finishing sets. And they're like, yeah, that was like one RAR. You'd be like, you got six sets of like straight leg deadlifts and that was all one RR. Are you serious? Like that, that is just not happening. Like for someone who's strong and well, like well-trained and I've been there and I've made that mistake. So now like when I have clients come on, like I'm checking their form videos, week one of them as well. And I'm like, I need to see you challenged. Like even on a leg press, like the last four reps on a leg press, all of them are like, you're making ugly faces. The reps probably are slowing down. Like that week one of training, it's, it's certainly not um, like, balls to the wall really hard but it's still hard like it has to be overlooked like i think overloading training is hard so then when i switch people's mindset so like it's hard but you can go harder but you can do more and uh, get their quality of technique and intent there with kind of low set volume and only add when it's a case of, yeah you're recovering on time how's like in session how are you feeling kind of good levels of like pump which i think is a helpful biomarker and also like disruption is that muscle feeling fatigued and if it's feeling like, okay, I don't know, I've done four sets for quads, which isn't a ton in a single session, but they're feeling very pumped. Probably they're feeling like a level of disruption where they're going to be sore tomorrow. Do I really need to add more? Have I already got a really effective training stimulus? I'm probably doing pretty well. So I don't need mm. to add in this scenario. So uh, I think kind of, yeah, I think my, my set volumes were like, like, I don't know, like hit over here. And now I've moved like over here because now I'm actually doing it appropriately. And I think that's unfortunately people get into this trap of thinking more is better when in fact more is only better if you're actually recovering and benefiting from more. And I'm very judici judicious now about, are we actually going to add a set this next week? Or can we actually just get what we need with the amount that we're already doing? And we get an increase in kind of, we get that progressive overload component and an increase a sufficient amount just through adding a, like a rep or a little bit of load. And our proximity to failure is probably a little bit closer. Mm. No, that's not, those are those are good tips because I've also been trapped in that as well. Where uh, I think I think if you're just starting out, it's understandable too, right? Like if you're just starting yeah. out a, a specific system or method or style or approach, um, there's going to be some lessons learned along the way, and that's one I'm sure many, even I'm sure clients have um, run into that, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. I still get it now and then, where especially if they haven't sent me form videos, so I haven't been able to look over things like they're go from week, say it's week four into week five. And they're like, oh, and they have in their head, oh, deloads next week. Like we haven't spoken. Oh, we could extend the mesocycle. Like if we can, like we won't just, they're like, okay, deloads week six, week five, that means balls out. And then I see like, so how did you add four reps week on week? <laughs> I'm like, how did you add 10 kilos to this lift? It doesn't make sense. It's because they've been training way under for those weeks prior. And then mm. they're like, oh, that's like kind of the kick up the ass they needed. And then we can set their week one loads appropriately. And they're like, oh, wow, week one's actually pretty tough. It's like, yeah, it should still be a little bit challenging. Like it shouldn't be a walk in the park. That is deloading. Do you think that cardio is, can you get lean, maybe not contest lean, but beach lean without any cardio? Do you, or do you think that's individual specific again, based upon what, what are, how often are they training? What's their energy expenditure? Do we have to drop calories so low that it becomes a, like, what are we doing here? Maybe you should add cardio so you can actually eat something, that kind of thing. Yeah.